Hydrocarbon solvents are products that are widely used in commerce. Some of these substances are volatile and exposure to vapor is likely to occur during use. In some situations, exposure levels may be relatively high, characterized by effects ranging from dizziness to drowsiness. That can be prevented by recommending occupational exposure limits, commonly known as OELs. An OEL is the maximum air concentration of a substance at which workers can be exposed throughout their working lifetime without developing adverse health effects. However, setting occupational exposure limits for hydrocarbon solvents is challenging since this type of solvents have complex and variable hydrocarbon compositions. This means that the worker will inhale not only one but many types of hydrocarbons from the solvent at the same time. Some of these hydrocarbons are well characterized and have their own OELs, but for others, the information may be limited, so action may be taken towards setting an OEL that considers all relevant types of hydrocarbons and that provides consistent occupational advice. Therefore, an approach that permits the calculation of a unique occupational exposure limit for each hydrocarbon solvent based on relatively simple compositional information is proposed by hydrocarbon solvent manufacturers in the United States and Europe. The design method for setting an OEL should be applicable to all hydrocarbon solvents, be based on sound scientific principles, take all hydrocarbon types into account, take special note of any hydrocarbon of unusual toxicity, for example, n-hexane, naphthalene. Produce changes in OELs that are proportional to the variability in composition. Ensure that the specific OEL of an individual hydrocarbon is not exceeded. Be readily adaptable to advances in understanding of the toxicity of the individual hydrocarbons. However, it is not always possible to identify all of the components of hydrocarbon solvents and most of the toxicology data is on representative hydrocarbon solvents rather than their individual components. Therefore, the Reciprocal Calculation Procedure RCP, approach was developed, which groups all hydrocarbons of similar physical, chemical and toxicological properties and assigns them a Group Guidance Value, or GGV, which covers existing OELs of representative hydrocarbons for the entire group. When these GGV values are used in the RCP calculation, it is ensured that hydrocarbons in that group do not exceed their own individual OELs. In practice, this means measuring a single OEL that reflects the solvent's hydrocarbon composition. Each GGV is supported by a series of toxicological studies, including acute central nervous system effects that confirm that certain hydrocarbon constituents can be grouped together under three GGV. These GGV are C5 to C8 aliphatic constituents, C9 to C15 aliphatic hydrocarbon constituents, and C9 to C15 aromatic constituents. The measured fractions of each GGV is divided by its own GGV, which added up give the reciprocal of the whole solvent OEL. Mathematically, the RCP is expressed as follows, where FRA, FRB are the mass fractions of the components of a hydrocarbon group, A and B, GGV A and GGV B are the exposure limits for the fractions A and B, and OEL is the overall exposure limit for the entire hydrocarbon solvent. In other words, the OEL of a hydrocarbon solvent calculated by the RCP is the summation of OEL fractions that add up to the overall hydrocarbon solvent's OEL. However, there are hydrocarbon solvent constituents that have a unique toxicity, such as N-hexane, that produces effects on the peripheral nervous system can't be included in the C5 to C8 GGV and must therefore be dealt separately through a so-called Specific Substance Value, or SSV, which is an established OEL for the substance in question. A C7 to C8 aromatic hydrocarbon GGV has not been developed because toluene, ethylbenzene and xylene must use SSVs, which are their respective OELs. In most cases, these constituents would not be found in hydrocarbon solvents at levels exceeding a few percent and are unlikely to have a substantial impact on the calculated values. In summary, the toxicological studies for solvents and their constituents indicate that the use of acute CNS effects as a basis for setting occupational exposure limits for hydrocarbon solvents is a well-established practice. Now the question remains, 
How do I calculate an OEL based on the RCP? Please watch our second video to learn more about this.